this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I like to do in this video is um, talk to you about cliff jumping, specifically the do's and don'ts of cliff jumping. And uh, the odds are I'm going to give you a handful of stories um, that I remember um, that have stuck around with me uh, that sort of remind me of some of the do's and don'ts of cliff jumping, right? Uh, and the reason I'm, uh, I'm putting this video together is because, uh, first of all, I don't believe in prohibition, right? Uh, a lot of people say cliff jumping is dangerous, and it's true, cliff jump jumping can be dangerous, so can anything else, right? Uh, if you don't really think about it. So um, I don't think prohibition works in general, so I'm more, you know, I sort of lean towards education, sharing of information instead of prohibition, and that's one of the main reasons that I'm doing this. I want to sort of share my experience of cliff jumping. Uh, and the other reason is uh, is because I want to, well, the, we're going to put a set of videos together for ASMR math, uh, possibly a collaboration with another ASMR artist, at least one of the videos anyway. Uh, so I wanted to give you, um, uh, you know, create a sort of a video as an intro uh, to the ASMR math, the videos coming up, which are going to be coming up in slow motion. Collaborations usually take a long time, so they're not going to be coming up right away, but I... Uh, I promise I'll have these videos up before the 2017 jumping season starts in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, maybe we'll get it done um, before your summer's over, right? Uh, so there's a sort of a set of videos coming up about the mathematics of uh, cliff jumping, really, right? Kinematics, uh, which is sort of... Uh, physics being applied mathematics in large part, right? Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, sort of give you a few of the, you know, bits of advice that I have if you're going to do cliff jumping. And then I'm going to share with you um, uh, some stories that have stayed with me, that stuck with me, that remind me uh, what some of the do's and don'ts of cliff jumping are. Uh, the way we sort of, um, I think the way it's going to work out is um, there's going to be one video coming up where um, my nephew is um, jumping off a cliff and uh, this is a place that I've gone to um, for a long time, right? I've been cliff jumping basically um, since I was 11 years old or so and got into serious cliff jumping uh, when I was like 14, right? My first 60-footer was when I was uh, 14 years old or so, okay, 14, 15 years old. So I've been cliff jumping for a long time and the place where we're going to go to is, uh, is a location that I've gone to for, well, since I was basically 13 years old, 12, 13, 11, well, not 11, 11, I started jumping off somewhere else. But since I was 13, 14 years old, I've been going to the spot and jumping. And there's multiple, multiple levels, like a really good jumping spot usually has, you know, from small to very large, right? So you can, you know, everybody has, a, has something they can do if, you know, people are into jumping very large. And a lot of people aren't into jumping very large. They can jump off the little one and swim around and stuff like this, right? So it's a nice place for everybody to hang out. Um, so what we're going to do for the sort of the first video is take a look at this jump that my nephew takes. And we assume it was a 60-footer. We always call it the 60-footer, and there's a couple of different names for it as well. Uh, what we call sort of the 60-footer. And um, I guess two, three, four years ago or so, uh, I think this video is probably about three, four years ago. Um, and, you know, we did the calculation on it when he did the jump, uh, just me and him, uh, to figure out how high the jump was, right? So what we're going to do in the first video is calculate the height of the first jump, which is the 60-footer, 60 60-footer 60 quotation marks. We'll find out exactly how high that jump is, right? And then what we're gonna do in the second video is go to one of the other jumps in this location, and we're gonna calculate how high the jump is that I take, and I take that jump, right? And what we're gonna do in the second video is calculate some additional, I guess, variables, I guess some of the additional uh, physics of that jump, right? 
uh, you know, it could be kinematic energy, potential energy, the momentum or whatnot. But, you know, we haven't sort of figured that out yet. Uh, most likely that's the video that's going to be a collaboration with another ASMR artist. Um, and for the third video, what we're going to do is we're going to take the information we learned from the second video and we're going to do all those calculations for that first jump that my nephew made, right? So we're going to figure out some of the variables, some of the forces, um, some, of, some of the properties that we can find from that jump, uh, from the 60 footer and uh, figure out what it really means to jump off a cliff, right? Uh, so that's the mathematics aspect of things. As far as uh, the advice I have, if uh, you know you do plan on cliff jumping, and again, this isn't a video telling to people to go cliff jump. But this is basically uh, some some of the things that I've learned, some of the things that I pay attention to when it comes to cliff jumping, some of the do's and don'ts that I do when I cliff jump, right? Um, as far as the first thing that goes, um, I sort of printed off some stuff, I made it into sort of point form. I got 20 points here, basically, that I'm going to run over, uh, go through with you, basically, right? Uh, but, but the first thing that I jotted down here is, uh, start slow, right? Start small. If you're not used to cliff jumping, you don't have to go off a really big one and jump. The odds are it's not going to end well. Uh, and the odds are that's probably going to be your last jump uh, because you're either going to get hurt and you won't want to jump off a cliff again or you won't be around to jump another day, right? So start, start slow, start small, um, you sort of definitely do want to be around to jump another day, right? Uh, point number two, uh, the jumps always look smaller when you're looking at them from the side than when they do when you're at the top. The jump always, always looks higher when you're looking at it from the top down, okay? Be ready for that. And if you're not going to commit 100% to that jump, then don't do it. Don't do it at that moment. You might come back later in the day. You might come back half an hour later, an hour later or something like that, or next week or next month to do it. But if you can't commit 100% to a jump, then don't jump. Okay. Um, one thing that I've noticed uh, that I've gone to cliff jumping with people is, uh, a lot of people don't appreciate what cliffs are. So one of the things I do when I take someone there brand new that they've never jumped with me, or sometimes I do this every year, right? When you go to the cliffs, slap the walls, slap the rock, slap the cliff, right? If you want a little bit hard, right? Uh, it's not going to move. If you slap it hard enough, it's gonna hurt, right? Keep that feeling in mind. Just imagine what it'd be like if you were hitting that thing when free falling, okay? That's what it means if you don't make a jump. Okay. Uh, fourth bit of advice, listen to people who've been there before, right? Listen to the locals who jumped there. Um, they'll tell you where to jump, tell, where, tell you where not to jump. Don't challenge them. Don't challenge them until you become a local in that area, until you learn the terrain and what's going on. Um, one thing you should always do is uh, if you're going somewhere new or if you're going somewhere for only the second or third time or something like this, uh, check the water, right, and the depth. Uh, climb down to where you're going to land. Swim around. Take a look around, right? Put on goggles. Look around. Make sure there's no little outcrops in the water that, you know, mounds of rock that are coming up, right? Um, look for floaters sort of logs that are uh floating under uh, you know there could be logs floating a little bit below the water right especially in lakes lakes are prone to this right so 
Swim around below where you're jumping. Make sure you get familiar with the area, familiar with where you're jumping. Figure out where you're gonna land, right? Make sure you remember when you get up top where it is that you were swimming around and where it is that you're supposed to land, right? Really important. Basically, check out where you are, right? Um, when standing on a cliff, and I've seen people do this, they stand on the ledge of the cliff and then when someone's talking with them, they turn around and have their back against the cliff. Wow, seriously, very dangerous, very dangerous. So in general, well, not in general, never. When you're standing on the edge of a cliff, never turn your back on the cliff. If you're gonna turn your back on a cliff, make sure you kneel down, you have one knee on the ground and you have one hand on the ground as well to sort of give you a, you know, stabilize you right never turn your back on a cliff especially when you're standing and when it comes to number seven uh, overhead cliffs are the best right when you're if you're going to a cliff and there's this overhanging right so it's overhanging the water where you know there's nothing under you those are the best cliffs to jump off of right uh, and if you can't you know you don't have access to overhang cliffs make sure when you're standing on a ledge Right, you could be standing on a ledge where the cliff goes straight down, or the cliff might be sloping towards the water a little bit, right? So you do need to clear that little zone. So make sure you push off the cliff, right? Make sure you push off as far as you can in general, unless you're jumping in a canyon or something where if you're jumping from this wall to this wall, then you can't jump too far because you might hit the other wall. And I've done these and I only did it twice I should know a couple of more times but I never went off a high one when there's a wall I have to avoid on that side and I have to clear this one right where there's a small little puddle here that you're supposed to land very dangerous very dangerous right so in general you want to jump off somewhere where there's no walls across from you and you're gonna to try to jump off as far as you can and clear as much as you can okay um, just regarding that one more thing regarding that uh, when you're standing on a ledge ledge and i've seen people do this don't just drop off the ledge right don't just fall push okay i just want to really emphasize that because i've seen some people jumping off cliffs where my heart really pounded and i had to look down to make sure they came back up again okay um one other thing i've seen is uh people going cliff jumping that don't know how to swim well um, if you're gonna go cliff jumping make sure you know how to swim well because it's not a just normal circumstances of you sort of dipping going in slowly and doop, 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 swimming around the water you're going you might go deep you might be far away from the rocks you might have to swim around to where you can climb up right so you have to be a good swimmer if you're not make sure you're only jumping off little guys close to where you can get off and get up again uh, until you learn how to swim well okay uh, if you're just starting up uh, first of all this should be obvious don't go for big ones and medium ones start off little but even if you've been jumping for a while don't in general don't go jumping off really high cliffs or even medium cliffs solo have backup right i've seen things go wrong with some pretty much pro jumpers right uh, i've had things go wrong for me after jumping off the same cliff multiple times right so in general um, if you're going you know medium to high you know higher end of medium to high um, make sure you have backup make sure you're not doing the solo uh, nature can be brutal nature can be brutal and in general it is if you give it the opportunity right in general and this is one thing I've learned how to do over the years right I used to I used to be pretty gung-ho and uh, if I saw people jumping off a cliff I would generally do if you know I would check it out and stuff like this but one thing I've tapered off in my in jumping life i guess jumping career uh, i don't run i don't do jumps where i have to do a pretty good run to clear rocks in the bottom right if i'm doing jumps in general i just want to do jumps where i'm taking 
you know, with two steps, you can clear a lot, right? If, I'm, if I have to do more than three, four steps to clear a jump, I, in general, I try to avoid those because you never know. You might do a misstep, you might trip. And if you trip on top of a cliff, just before you do a jump, you're coming straight down and you're not gonna clear anything, right? So in general, for me personally, I don't do jumps where um, I have to clear, I have to run, I have to have a running start to the jump when you're jumping okay uh when you've done the jump basically you know your arms you wiggle your arms you sort of try to stabilize right if it's really windy that might throw you off so in general if it's really windy be careful with really high jumps right but when you're jumping you know your arms are pretty loose you're trying to balance and it's all about the core really right if if you're not a professional diver of course right if you're doing you're not doing loop to loops and stuff but if you're just jumping, you're gonna land with your feet. You can use your arms, you know, and legs just to balance yourself out. But before you hit the water, tighten up, right? It's all about the core. You keep your core tight, right? Suck in your muscles, keep your head straight, looking, you know, before you hit the ground, make sure you're looking straight ahead, right? You can look at the water as you're going down, trying to look at the location where you're jumping, right? And that's a pretty good idea to look at where you're going in the water, but before you hit the water before the impact do not do not continue to look at the water especially from high jump because your face is going to get a pounding so just before you hit the water what you want to do is tighten your stomach you should be tight anyway but tighten up even more either put your arms beside you right well you put your arms beside you even straight either straight down by your legs or tighten up right make sure you're tight and make sure you're looking straight ahead with your head being centered above you okay don't <laughs> I've seen people do this um, don't put your hands in front of your face before you hit the water do not hold your nose right uh, even when you're about to hit the water right so basically you don't want to have any obstacles in front of your face uh, when you're about to hit the water because if you're jumping from medium to high that impact is pretty solid right we'll do the mathematics we'll do the physics but that impact that you know it's gonna be, be pretty hard and you don't want kickback you don't want your hand your fist your nose anything hitting your face when you're hitting the water at the same time as well right um, so make sure you clear your face and I in general I don't even from the high jumps I don't uh, protects uh, my private parts the sensitive areas in general I'm pretty tight so I poof, hit the water I don't again I don't want kickback coming in uh, to do any damage right or cause any pain uh, wearing jumping shoes is a pretty good idea uh, at times over the years I've either used old running shoes or swimming shoes right swimming shoes are, if you're gonna swim around in the water are way easier to swim around in the water if you're going to use old sneakers and stuff take off the inside linings and whatnot make it as light as possible okay um, as far as jumps go the order of danger for me to my experience and i'll share some of the stories with you um, for me rivers lakes and oceans that's the order of danger when it comes to where you're jumping okay rivers i find the most dangerous okay um lakes are second to me and oceans are the least dangerous place um reason being because rivers uh really depend on the season right depends on rain depends on what the dam is releasing so river water varies a lot you can go to a river where the river water is really shallow or you can go to a river where the river water is pretty deep sometimes the current is really strong so it's hard to predict from day to day um so in rivers i do you know there are areas i've gone to and i still go to every now and then and jump and swim around a little bit uh, but i generally i like the i like the ocean okay uh, as far as lakes go i have jumped in lakes and i do jump in lakes but not often okay and i really check out lakes because lakes tend to have uh, floaters where logs they you know logs get this um, dislodged uh, if they've fallen down and if you go to most lakes you'll see a ring of if there is forested area and where i am sort of a temperate rainforest so there's a lot of trees around the lakes so 
with lakes there's a lot of trees in my area anyway around the lake so they tend to fall down when they fall down they rot they go down and, and then when they sometimes they float up they get this lodged so in lakes i found that you know closer to the shore there are times where logs have shifted so i really check out lakes um, before i do anything before i do any jumps and mercury murky lakes are more dangerous of course because you can't see as far okay so for me you know 99 percent of jumps i do are ocean ocean jumps uh, we have awesome coast here to do jumping in uh, i covered this before but basically uh, don't don't look at the water just before impact center your head look straight out make sure you're tight you know look into the horizon just before you hit the water um, arms on the side and during impact either straight down or and if you're going to put it beside you do not put it like this like don't go into the water like this not a good idea if you're doing it from a high jump right because if the impact's hard enough you're going to get hit right if you're going to put it beside you and this is one thing i tend to do i go like this right beside me i protect my rib cage right like boxing basically right but i don't hunch over i'm straight out right one other thing i want to emphasize well is about four more points but again i want to emphasize this if you're doing medium to high jumps the impact is hard right recuperation time may be long or it may never be right you might not recoup from a jump right. I'll, I'll cover this with you on a uh, in, in the story in the anecdotes i guess but be careful okay be careful um there are multiple ways you know point number 18 there are multiple ways to get winded okay you can even get winded on medium jumps this is extremely dangerous because when you're winded you lose you can't really swim right all you can do is hold on so if you end up getting winded and you can get winded multiple ways you could be on your side you could be tilted back tilted back is hard hits your back poof, knocks out all the air from you okay and the side as well right there's multiple ways to get winded if you get winded head straight to the nearest rock where you can hang on right if you're with someone if someone is with you if they realize that you're winded and you should make this agreement if you're hitting the water if you swim straight out to the rock and you're holding on that means you're in trouble if you're with someone that person better be in the water when they notice you being winded because re recuperating from being winded it might take a few minutes um, and if you're solo in the water you don't have a good grip you don't have anywhere to hold you know go to uh, uh, that might be your last jump uh, point number 19 when you when you hit the water when you're in the water open up right open your arms slow yourself down in general you don't want to go as deep as possible sometimes it's fun as long as you know it's clear i do that every now and then places i know where it's 100 percent clear but in general when i jump when i hit the water i open up i slow myself down and i curve my legs so i go whoosh, right i don't just keep on going straight down i whoosh, right if i'm facing this way whoosh, right i open up whoosh, i slow myself down um, one other thing i'd like to mention is um uh, i mentioned that rivers lakes and oceans that's the order of danger of cliff jumping for me but the most dangerous jump that you can do are rope jumps or ropes that are tied to trees or sometimes they do it on cliffs i guess but rope jumps rope you know trees that are overhanging you hang a rope and people will go ooh, swing or swing jumps i guess jump out right I've seen some nasty hits on those. I've seen pros, well, pros meaning people who've done the rope jump multiple times. I've seen some nasty hits on those, right? I don't do rope jumps. I don't do swing jumps anymore. Okay. Just my two cents. Now, those are uh, 
20 bits of in, you know, advice that I can give you regarding uh, cliff jumping. As far as uh, just stories, just uh, I have seven basically little stories here. They're not stories. It might be just little something someone's done, right? Uh, these are the ones that have stuck with me, okay? Actually, there's eight of them. I'll tell you the eighth one right away because that one is, um, it blew me away. It told me, it explained to me why um, some people are scared of cliffs, right? Some people that are sort of, I've seen them do crazy stuff when, you, when I take them to the class they get scared, right? So basically take these stories uh, that I'm about to share with you and take them to heart, okay? This is things that have actually happened, okay? The first one is, uh, like I mentioned, I've taken people um, to the cliffs. I've taken hardcore skateboarders that do jump, you know, I don't know how many stairs they've done, right? I've gone to cliff jumping with people who have broken their arms, legs, wiped out hardcore, right? And they still continue to do the activity that almost killed them. But when they get to the cliffs, they're hugging the cliff, right? They're moving really slowly. They don't, when they're doing the jump, you can feel how scared they are, right? And one of my friends explained to me why that's the case, why he did that, is because when it came to the city, um, if it was skateboarding, if it was biking, if it was doing jumps from one crazy location to another, uh, the reason that cliffs scared them was because cliff, cliffs are unpredictable. Nature is unpredictable, like, right? And nature is unpredictable. It can be extremely brutal. But when you're in the city, man-made structures, you know where things are. You know what things feel like, right? So that's the reason where why some people might be comfortable doing some stuff which you wouldn't do, but you happily jump off a cliff, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, when it comes to self-preservation, we're all different. So never force someone to jump off a cliff if you think they're, uh, they're able to do it, okay? Uh, let them go their own pace. In the advice that I gave you, I mentioned that I don't do, in general, I don't do rivers anymore. I don't do, I don't do cliffs where there's another wall here on this side and let me tell you the story of um, one of the when I was younger when I was teenager right when I was you know first three four years of me doing cliff jumping right um, I was always going to the location that we're going to do the ASMR videos for do the um, do the mathematics of it right the kinematics of it right um, but I was always going there and I would bring friends there and stuff like this so one of my friends liked jumping in rivers so he um, he asked me to go with him to this one place he wanted to jump and he he wanted to make sure someone else was with them so I agreed I went and I'd never gone there before and he told me some of the things I should do some of the things I shouldn't do so we climbed up you know to the cliff and it was a you know it was a, it was a long cliff it was a pretty big cliff it was like a 50 footer or something right and we get out there and I noticed that you know we're up here and I noticed that the wall is over here and we're kids, right? When, when, you're, when you're younger, you don't really um, appreciate the dangers that you might be in, right? So he told me, you know, okay, Chicho, you want to jump in this area over here? He pointed that out. He goes, just follow me and stuff like this. Don't jump too far that you hit the other side. And I was like, what? <laughs> he goes, make sure you jump far enough where you clear this. And I'm like, what? So you want me to pinpoint that little area? that you're going to jump? He goes, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, you know, I've been jumping for a while now, like four, three, four years at least, right? Uh, on a regular basis, like multiple times a week in the summer times we'll go, right? So I felt pretty confident. So he took the jump and, you know, he landed in an area and he swam off. Uh, and I said, okay. <laughs> so I took the jump. Now, one thing my friend forgot to mention 
was and it didn't occur to me because I was always used to jumping in the ocean and the ocean is basically high tide low tide right and high tide low tide in the ocean it can add a fair bit right but if you're jumping in a clear area that you know you're you're safe to jump in that little bit is nothing compared to how much how much clearance you got below that right because high tide low tide you know it could be meters right adds a lot to a jump rivers aren't like that rivers in general if you're jumping it means you know you can clear you can you know there's enough water to jump in but my friend forgot to mention to me and it didn't occur to me because i was young and stupid to when i hit the water to open up and slow myself down i did it like i was jumping in the ocean now when i jumped i hit the ground wow 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 that was my first time where i took a jump where i came out and i went i can't believe that just happened right i was lucky enough that i had slowed down far enough that when i hit the ground my knees gave a little bit and my ass touched the bottom but it wasn't you know no damage was done as soon as my legs hit the bottom i pushed up as hard as i could and my knees crumbled a little bit and i pushed up right that's one of the reasons i don't do big jumps in rivers anymore and one of the reasons when i go cliff jumping with people brand new i look at them in the eyes and i explain to them exactly what it is they should be careful with sometimes they listen sometimes they don't but i try to cover as much as i can okay that's one story um, I was lucky this one time I went cliff jumping and again it's the same location that um, we're gonna do the mathematics stuff actually all uh, almost all of these stories are from that same location because I've gone there a lot but a few years ago I went to uh, we're jumping in, in my you know in the spot and there was a couple of teenagers there that were doing you know the 60 footer the one that you're going to see the well they were psyching themselves up for when we got there it took them about an hour to get the to get psyched up and you know they came down and did the middle jump where we were jumping where you're going to see me do the jump and then they went up and whoo, did the 60 footer once and they were all ah, they felt powerful right and they were talking and they were you know loud and very excited and stuff like this it was fun right it's fun to see people jump actually right um, but one thing they did was they swam around right in so this area we're at is sort of a mound up and then there's a sort of a little bay going in right and in general you don't want to jump in areas where the cliffs are coming in into a shore area where there's like a beach right if the cliffs are going like this sort of a small bay or a, I forget what the names are right you want to go to the edges where the outcrops are and jump off those right but these kids jumped off the 60 footer the big jump straight out into open ocean basically and then they swam around came up to the bay cliff climbed up this area and went to another cliff which was about 60 feet as well a little bit less 50 feet and they were going to jump into the bay area and i've been going there since i was like 12 years old right i've been going there for 30 plus years and they knew that you can't jump from there You'll kill yourself so i was waving my arms and yelling across i mentioned don't jump there don't jump there I try to convince these two kids not to jump there not to jump there not to jump there and they weren't listening right um they've been drinking a little bit right and in general don't don't uh it's amazing having refreshments in the sun but don't go above a limit where you're willing to risk your life for a jump right uh make sure you're able to maintain okay so i was waving my arms yelling telling them don't do that don't do that you won't make it it's not you know it's not and they kept on coming up and one of them actually took a running start and stopped right and they were supposed to do a running start they thought they could run and go across so after about 15 minutes of trying to tell them not to do it and some other you know a couple other people got involved and told them not to do it as well uh, they weren't listening and they were lucky that some guy with a canoe was coming along and uh, he saw us trying to convince these kids not to jump right and I stopped and I you know 
for 15 minutes I was telling them not to do it. And it was very difficult to convince people not to kill themselves. But uh, the canoe person came down and looked at them and said, what are you kids crazy? What are you stupid? And he brought out his paddle and went down and hit the ground, right? And the kids looked. And the canoe guy kept on saying, and the kids kept on arguing, saying, oh, we can do it, we can do it. So the canoe guy went away. And finally, after about five minutes, ten minutes, these kids finally realized that oh, that's a bad idea, a very bad idea, right? Um, so listen to people who've been there. Uh, don't risk your life. And they, they did some things in that jump, which, you know, in the advice, they didn't even check the water. They even, even though they swam, through that area they didn't look down to see what you know what the clearing was as far as it comes to being winded okay um, we went to this jump uh, with uh, there was a bunch of us going there and so there was a friend of ours that was for the first time doing the 60 footer jump right and we've been going there for weeks this summer and the previous summer he'd come with us as well and he hadn't done the 60 footer and um and uh he finally was solid enough he'd been going to the gym the previous and for the last year or so because you know you have to be solid if you're doing serious jumps so he had become more solid he felt more confident right uh, and this was his first really large jump. The previous one to that was a 20 foot, right? 20 foot to 60 foot, huge difference, huge difference, right? Uh, in terms of mathematics, physics, and in terms of what you need to do, okay? So I taken, I knew he was going to do the jump. Well, he said he was going to do the jump, and it seemed like he was going to do it. So I took my jump. I, you know, I haven't done the 60 footer for a number of years now. I don't feel strong enough to do it, right? That's how hard of a hit a 60 foot jump is right so i've been doing the 30 footer so i jumped did my 30 foot jump i hung around the water and waited for him to do the 60 footer and i sort of chilled on the rocks when i if it was taking too long and stuff like this and you know he finally did the jump but what he did he landed with his back right <laughs> he didn't land straight he landed with a tilt and the water hit him in the back and he got winded and he came back up and he had his hand on his back and his face was like like he was in pain right not only you get winded but you're in pain and i saw him try to take a breath and he couldn't take a breath so i swam over there right and he was smart enough not to resist and i did the i don't know what it's called a lifeguard thing i put my elbow around his neck and i swam him back and I just told him, take it easy, relax, relax, I got you, it's okay. And I talked, you know, I mentioned that a few times so he wasn't scared, right? And he he was able to get a little bit of air in while I was taking him back. And when he when we got back to the rocks, I you know, I was there with him, making sure he wasn't gonna slip down and climb onto the rocks and stuff like this. At the time I you know, he said thank you, Chicho. <laughs> um uh, and at the time, uh, I sort of brushed it off because I didn't want him to get scared of what had happened, right? I didn't want him to be scared of jumping. I wanted him to learn from the lesson, right? Because this happened to me as well, right? Uh, so that's one thing that can happen. If you see someone, if you know someone, if you're going with someone, you're going to do a, they're going to do, or you're going to do a big jump you've never done before, make sure someone's in the water to save you, uh, just in case it's needed. Now on the same cliff, as you can tell, uh, a lot of people get hurt on this cliff, right? On the same cliff, uh, one year we went and there was a guy uh, who was standing on the ledge and was looking down, right? We were doing our jumps and this guy was standing there looking down at this jump for 15, 20 minutes, right? He was holding on, he was looking and we weren't sure what he was going to do if he was going to jump or not i i had my doubts i didn't think he was going to jump because i've seen a lot of people do that before right literally and they back away smartly back away right but finally this guy what he ended up doing was he wasn't jumping because i was wondering why he's just standing there right but what he wanted to do was do a flip off of it and that's what he did he instead of kicking off he 
dropped off. And during the drop, he went, right? He went, he tilted head first and then did, did the rotation and landed with his um, legs, right? But he landed sideways. And you could hear it. Like the sound is, uh, it's unmistakable, right? You know someone's just, oh, it's not a nice landing. So his friend was in the water with him too because I guess he knew this was his, he was trying to do something, you know, flip. Um, and then the guy climbed back up and he was going past us and we said, wow, that look, sounded like it hurt. He goes, yeah, that hurt. I saw him a year later. I didn't see him again that year. I saw him a year later and I said, hey, you're the guy that did the flip. How did that turn out? It was a hard hit. He goes, yeah, it was a hard hit. It took me months to recoup, right? So a hit from a large fall can take you months to recoup. And it took this guy months to recoup. He came back the following year. Uh, I didn't see him do the big one anymore. Okay. Uh, I didn't see him too many times after that, but he didn't, I didn't see him do the big one. The first time I took the 60 footer, okay? I was 14 years old and we were jumping off another area and we were young, we we're 14. Uh, in Canada, 14 year olds pastime, you go out to the beach, you drink a little, you do whatever, right? You're having a good time in the summertime, in the summer with your friends, right? And we saw, like we were jumping from about a 25, 30 footer, right? 25 footer 20 25 footer actually it wasn't even 30 20 20 25 footer right and we saw these people jumping from the 60 footer and they were like long hair much older they were in their mid 20s and stuff were 14 years old wow okay someone you can actually jump off that so me and a friend jumped from the 20 footer swam across climbed up went up top right look down like really the difference between 20 foot and 60 feet is huge huge and we looked and those guys knew they're they're stand, they're sitting there they're doing the same thing we were but they're in their mid-20s right uh, they've been coming there a lot longer than we have and there were you know there was one part where you can run and jump and and we're we're there right there's you know 20 year olds there going uh -huh, you're 14 years old you're up here doing your thing and we're like no way me and my friend talk was no way we can do this That's crazy talk right and we both turn around to go climb back down in shame right and we both went ah that was it and we turn around and jumped both almost at the same time i turn around and i looked up and he was his legs were here right a couple of meters away right did the jump up Boom, hit the water. Now, when you're jumping from a 20 foot, you can be loose, see. Like, you, you seriously, you can be loose. You should tighten up, right? Because even from a 20 footer, if you land wrong, it's not gonna, it's not gonna feel good, right? But you really don't have to focus on being tight. When I landed the 60 footer, my, I hadn't tightened up and my legs were not solid. I hadn't locked them. You don't have to lock your knees, but you gotta be, you know, you have to lock your legs in position. And I hadn't, right? I probably had gone over like my limit when it came to refreshments, right? When I landed, I was lucky because my legs were a little bit separate. And what happened was my knees buckled. My knees buckled and both of my knees came up right here they skimmed off my cheek now just imagine if my legs were closed and my knees buckled it would have knocked out like it would have knocked out all my teeth probably sent my nose into my brain right that would have been my last jump most likely that would have been a statistic right uh, i learned a lot on that jump i learned uh, to really know my limit when I go to 
the rocks, right? They're unforgiving, they're unforgiving. And I've seen other people get hurt because of that, okay? Um, and that comes into the advice that he gave. Uh, make sure you're solid, make sure you're solid. You don't want that jump to be your last jump. Um, another one, uh, another a couple of other things that I've seen. I've seen this happen, I don't know how many times now, but it, and this happens on the 30 footer, on the 60 footer, the damage is more. I've seen 60 footer and 30 footer jumps do this to people is when they hit the water, they're looking at the water, and what happens is when they hit the water, they either rip, rip their lips separate. <laughs> I'm laughing, it's not funny, but their lips separate, and I've seen people uh, rip their upper lip on the inside and rip their lower rip, <laughs> lip on the inside, and they bleed, right? It heals, hopefully. Hopefully it's not too wide. I've seen some people have some pretty big gashes, right? I haven't checked with, back with them to see if the gash is still there, but, um, or, you know, there's a wound, wound mark still there. But, you know, this goes to the point that I made. I don't I don't even know how many people I've seen do this. It's very common for people to do this. They look at the water, poof, their lip goes up or the bottom lip goes up and they you know they come up after the jump to go, oh look I'm bleeding. <laughs> the lip is bleeding. Right? Uh, so close your mouth. Uh, when you hit the water, don't have your mouth open, don't look at the don't look at the water. Um, and when you're hitting the water, if you're worried about water going up your nose just when you when you're tightening up right when you you do breathe out you do have to breathe before you take a hit right remember you're taking a hit boom, boom, right and the last story I have it's not I haven't witnessed this but um, um, someone I care about told me this and it's something they did and I've heard of other people doing this uh, and it's something I had told them not to do, but they ended up doing it when I wasn't there, was basically jump off bridges. And bridges is another thing that people jump off of, obviously, right? Um, I've done it once and I didn't do it again. And I did a very small bridge and I didn't do it again, right? It just seems sketchy, right? But this person told me that they didn't listen uh, when I said don't jump off a bridge and they went somewhere that wasn't in my area right and they were walking across a train train bridge and it was a nice hot summer and they decided to jump off and they jumped off the bridge and <laughs> they jumped off the bridge and then when they went into the water they went you know it was a fairly long jump at least 30 footers i think 30 or 40 foot they said they went into the water and they looked they opened their eyes and they landed between pillars, right? So they went in and beside them were two pillars, so they landed between pillars. If they were like two meters this way, they would have hit the pillar, or you know, three meters this way, they would have hit the pillar, right? Wow, whoa, whoa, very dangerous, very dangerous, right? So if you're jumping off bridges, um, make sure you know the bridges, make sure you check that stuff out. And that goes down to the advice uh, that I gave, right? Uh, check out the water check out the water you don't want to get hurt you don't want that jump to be your last jump okay so those are sort of my anecdotes my stories um, some of the things I've learned from cliff jumping and this isn't a recommendation or anything for you to go out and cliff jump uh, but just sharing some information and what we're gonna do um, following these <laughs> this video um, the odds are we'll put out three videos. Um, again, one video of my nephew, uh, you know, jumping off a 60 footer. We're going to figure out how high he was, right? And then we're going to figure out how high I was when I was doing the jump, right? Figure out the height of the cliff that I jumped off of. Uh, and we're going to figure out some of the other uh, parameters some of the other variables we're going to do some physics right figure out kinetic energy potential energy momentum 
velocity. Velocity would be awesome to figure out how, how, how fast I was going when I was hitting the water, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back to my nephew's jump, the 60-footer. We're going to figure out exactly how high it is, right? And we're going to figure out the same parameters that we did for my jump. We're going to figure out for the 60-footer, right? And we're going to try to figure out uh, if my nephew was out of his mind taking a 60-footer jump, <laughs> right? Um, this should be fun. This should be fun. And again, this is going to be slow motion. Uh, I'm not sure when these will come out, but they will be done in the next few months, and they will be ready for uh, the Northern Hemisphere anyway for the 2017 cliff jumping season for the start of it anyway. Okay. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you take some of the things I set to heart, and I hope you're careful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.